Hi, I'm Mary Ito, and you are watching More to Life. Later on the show today, a look at a misunderstood condition called Tourette's. Well, when you hear the words Tourette syndrome, you probably imagine someone swearing a blue streak. But that is not the defining symptom of the disease. Tourette's usually appears before the age of 18 and is much more common in males. Duncan McKinley is one of those males. He's the subject of a documentary called Life's a Twitch, which airs tonight on TVO's The View From Here. He's here to tell us all about it, but first, let's take a look at a clip from Life's a Twitch. <laughs> Growing up wasn't a question of whether I would kill myself, it was a question of when. All I knew was that I seemed to have a demon in my head. I had this malicious being in my head. Ha! Once I decided to understand this devil, I learned he wasn't a devil at all. I learned what the true devil was ignorance. horrified thought that's going through all of the audience's minds simultaneously right now is, my God, he drives. <laughs> there are certain ticks like, um, I don't know, taking the steering wheel and, and whipping it to the side going 90 mile an hour that I know I, I know is going to cause an accident and, and I know will probably kill me. It's like these survivalist instincts overpower and take over and say, look, I don't really care how much you want to scratch that itch. You're not going to do it, period, end of story. And that's a clip. It's going to be on TVO's A View from Here, and we have Duncan McKinley here in the studio today. Hello, Duncan. Hi. Tell us, when was it that you finally knew that you had Tourette's syndrome? I, I think I can give you two dates. Um, I, I knew that I had something when I was about seven years old, but uh, actually putting a name to it, uh, I wasn't formally diagnosed till I was 19. 19. Yes. So that period from 7 to 19 was so difficult because, you know, what, what were people around you saying? What, what, was the, what was the concern? What was the problem? Well... One thing I should mention right off the bat is that uh, I, I, I tick, I, I, I show a lot more symptoms now than I ever did when I was in Ridgetown. I, I, I go back now and people say, my, <laughs> what was in the water wherever he went? Uh, because people with Tourette's syndrome have the ability to suppress. Yes. And it's not actually the tick movement that's involuntary, it's the urge to have that movement or make that noise. And so it's, in, in that sense, it's analogous to having a mosquito bite. And so uh, it... I you got to go, itch it, yeah, so you got to do it. And I would go through my days sort of with all these mosquito bites, but I would hold them in and try not to let them out. And, and so uh, for that reason, I mean, there were a lot of other things that people were noticing, but the, the, the ticks themselves, the Tourette's itself, wasn't that obvious. Ah. Now, um, I think we should probably talk about exactly what the syndrome is. Sure. Yeah. Define um, it for us. Well, the, the clinician in me can give you the very dry definition yes. that Dr. Tourette's... Dr. McKinley, <laughs> please, give us the definition. Dr. McKinley could say that, you know, Tourette's is a, a number of uh, movements and noises called tics that, that occur intermittently uh, throughout a period of, uh, of at least one year. But, but sort of Duncan, the, the Tourette'er, uh, would tell you that it's, it's really, it's, it's sort of an amplification of self, really. The, the, the brakes are a little bit leaky. I mean, things slip past the goalie a little bit too easily. So... Uh, you're, 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 a bit of a, you're a bit of a walking id. You sort of have your whole stream of consciousness out on your sleeves. So um, it, things that you're feeling, things that you're thinking, uh, things that you want to say, things that you want to do just kind of bubble out a little bit too quick, whereas, whereas most people sort of have that inhibition ability to sort of decide when they're going to do what uh, at, at societally appropriate times. Uh, people with Tourette's don't necessarily have that uh, luxury. Mm. But you say that it is, you, you could suppress it, right? But it's that urge, it's that desire to, yes. to really want to do it. And, and there's a cost involved. If, if, to go back to the mosquito bite analogy, right. if you think about not scratching that itch, the more you think about not scratching it, the more insistent it becomes, and the longer you hold off on it, the more and more it, it, it pulls your consciousness.
conscious awareness to that itch until eventually uh, you're, you're, you're certainly not able to do your work or pay attention in math class or do whatever mm. you're supposed to do because you're fighting this, this inner war. And how common is it? About 1% of the population has Tourette's syndrome. 1%? And is it something that would be treated? It can be. Yeah. Uh, one thing I've found myself is that um, although I'm not medicated myself personally, I've made that personal choice, yes. um, I've, I've found that over the, the 10 years since I've been diagnosed, uh, everything's changed 180 degrees and really the the only thing I, I was very much a victim uh, I'm not anymore and the only thing that hasn't changed are my symptoms and so what I've learned is that there's a lot of psychological stuff there's a lot of work around attitude and your own perceptions of what's happening and and acceptance of yourself mm. that that is far more important than the neurology ever could be uh, so I think there, there's a num the therapy is important, but I think th there's also a number of psychological techniques, cognitive behavioral type interventions that can be successful. Uh, there's various medications that can be tried. Uh, more often than not, medications now used for the associated disorders that often come along with Tourette's that um, most in the medical community even now would say that um, ticks really shouldn't be medicated unless they're, they're, they're very severe and, and mm -hmm. possibly causing self-harm. Mm -hmm. Now, you, uh, you exhibit some of the common symptoms, right? The facial ticks, mm -hmm. involuntary movements, huh. some of the sounds. But you, you don't swear, do you? Well, I could if you'd like to. <laughs> I might now. <laughs> now that you put well, that into my head. Could you repress that one? <laughs> <laughs> you're very, you know, yeah, you're very brave to have me on live TV here. But, uh, no, it's, that's not a very common tick, actually. I think, I think it's uh, fairly media friendly. <laughs> well, this is it. You know, why is it? We, we, when someone says Tourette's syndrome, right, people mm -hmm. automatically think, oh, that's where they swear uncontrollably. Well, and, and again, I think, I think it's, 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 it's good TV <laughs> that, that uh, you if you have someone on there doing this for an hour, you know, that's not going to draw the viewers as much as, you know, me telling yeah, the viewers to get off for yeah. an hour. <laughs> and, and so uh, it's, it's uh, when, when the disorder was originally conceptualized about 100 years ago, mm -hmm. some of the original cases that were looked at, those people had involuntary swearing. So I think that's one of the reasons that uh, that particular symptom sort of got stuck in the nomenclature as something that's typically expected. But uh, less than less than a third of people with, with, with Tourette's, uh, and, mm -hmm. and particular, it's particularly rare in, 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 in children and in very mild cases as okay. well. Now, see, what really struck me uh, from the video last night is you're 28. <coughs> You said that you were officially diagnosed huh. at 19, right? So mm -hmm. that's only nine years ago. And yet the illness was identified 100 years ago. <laughs> Has it been so slow to come this far? I, well, it, Tourette's has had an, an interesting history, and it, it's really only been called Tourette's you know, since about 1978. There was, a, there was a fairly seminal book that came out in 1978, and, and at that time, more and more research w w was, w was conducted. And before that, it was thought maybe to be a behavioral problem. Uh, Freud had some fun with it. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough said. Was there a mother um, involved? Or was there a mother involved? Oh, of course, in a mother. Of course. Okay. And, and masturbation, of course, was involved, because everything comes back to mothers and masturbation masturbation but um, it, it's 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 actually been a privilege to be a part of the the Tourette's movement I guess over the last four years or so because I, I've really seen a phenomenal change and growth just exponentially in the number of people that are aware of it now so well thanks to shows like yours uh, the, 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 this, the the words getting out there and it's not that mm -hmm. more people have Tourette's syndrome, it's just more people like myself that, that were holding in all these itches uh, can read about themselves, can see uh, you know, a, a show like this and go, wow, that's me. What's usually the reaction from people who come in contact with you and who don't know you? Right. Well, sort of coming you know, the, from one extreme where, where I was growing up not knowing what was going on to right. the point where I'm at now where I, I'm, I'm, I'm very aware of what's happening, I've learned that I was really the master of my own reactions that that uh, that well and the psychologist in me you know recognizes now from years of study that people really tend to look to other people to see how to react in an unknown circumstance mm. and so you really self-fulfill when, when I didn't understand what was happening when I was very embarrassed about when I was mortified about wanted to hide it and hated myself and 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 felt that no one would want to be around me those are the reactions I got that I, I really made myself a better target in in my nonverbal communication and how I approached people and in terms of how I reacted myself to the symptoms uh, and 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 so yes a lot a lot of people did did tease and have not very nice things to say then um, but I, I really sort of caused that myself and and I also would interpret 
interpret people reacting as that person doesn't like me, that person is mean and cruel and doesn't want to understand, when really as, as I've grown and learned to accept it myself, I've realized, no, it's not that they don't want to understand, they just don't understand. I'm not giving them the opportunity to show how understanding they can be ah. because I'm not sending a good positive right. message. I'm not explaining mm -hmm. myself. I'm not smiling and giving a, an icebreaker to, to let them know it's okay to talk to me about this if you're curious. So when you came to that realization, is that when you thought, you know, I need to go out and actually formally speak to people because that's mm -hmm. what you do? Yes. The, uh, I think that... Um, I think that there's so many kids out there. It, it, it's really, it's, it, it's, a tr it's a tragedy that they're, they're, they're working so hard to hide their negatives and, and, and to, to stuff all this stuff down that they perceive that people will ostracize them for, that they don't realize, A, how many benefits mm -hmm. um, wearing yourself you know, close to the surface can bring, mm -hmm. and, and they don't explore those benefits. But also, again, they're, they're, they're very quick to think, okay, well, if I've just ticked a little bit, and people have reacted that much, I can't tick even more because people will react even greater. Yeah. But oftentimes all it is is that kids don't realize there's a disorder, they don't know what's going on. And you know what, I wish we could talk to you longer. We only have a few seconds left, but oh, you know, as the film starts off, you, you told us about how despondent you were as a child, even suicidal. Today, as Dr. Duncan McKinley, how, how do you feel today with Tourette's? I think, I think Duncan McKinley has a lot of scars. I think that um, though the things that I went through helped me to learn a lot, uh, helped me to grow a lot, I, I, and, and a lot of the negatives I went through have, have turned around and become certain positives that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Well, thank so, you, Duncan. I'm, I'm sorry. I wish we had more time to okay. chat, but best of luck with thank all your you. work. Duncan McKinley is the subject of a documentary called Life's a Twitch, and it airs tonight at 10 on TVO's The View From Here. For more information on Tourette's, you can check out Duncan's website at www.lifesatwitch.com.